This is radio station OKKK in Tuna, Texas, serving the greater Tuna area at 275 watts. I'm in on. Good morning, Tuna. This is Thurston Wheelis. And this is Arliss Scrooby. And this is the Wheelis Ruby Report. And here we go with the news. Take it away, Thurston. Well, folks, in the news today, we've got the winner of the Tuna Junior High American Heritage Essay Contest for this year. And this year's winner, now the name of her essay was titled Human Rights. Why Bob? <laughs> Second place went to Jimbo Beaumont for living with radiation. <laughs> and third place went to Levita Posey for her essay titled The Other Side of Bigotry. <laughs> I tell you, Alex, with subjects like that, I don't know how they ever picked a win. I don't either. I tell you, it should make the citizens of Tuna cry to know that we are still producing well-educated students who know what America is all about. They do. They do. They do. They do. They do. They do. <laughs> Oh, Go right ahead. Oh. Well, I have bad news for the Greater Tuna area. Former County Judge Roscoe Buckner died at his home yesterday. He had suffered a severe stroke. Buckner, who was judge in the Greater Tuna area for 47 years and who hung more people in the 30s than any other active judge, had a history of heart trouble. Now, the body will lie in state at Hubert Funeral Home starting today at 12 noon. And Wexler Hubert says if you come before noon, you're going to have to wait because the judge won't be ready till noon. <laughs> well, I tell you, folks, that's some bad news. It is. It is. It is. It is. It is. And on the art scene, the on again, off again auditions for the Tuna Little Theater production of My Fair Lady are on again. Now, they've been called off due to a lack of budget, but Joe Bob Lipsy, who is director of the show this year, and who is a recent graduate of Southwest Texas Eastern A&I State University, says he's found a way to go ahead with the production by using sets and costumes from last year's show of South Pacific. <laughs> and according to Joe Bob, this will be the first production ever of My Fair Lady set in Polynesia. <laughs> well, I don't know, Earl. It's something like that's just liable to put us on the map. On it, on it, on it. On They'll find us. <laughs> so Joe Bob says, get on your... Your Hawaiian shirts and your grass skirts and your, your coconuts and get out there to that Coweta Baptist Church this Thursday evening at 8.30 and audition for my fair lady. And Joe Bob says he wants to integrate the cast this year. So, if you know of any Negro or Mexican-American actors or actresses, why well, have them come on out and try out for that chorus. That's right. Come on. Come on out. Come on out. You never know. You just might get a part. Might be nice. Well, sir, you got that uh, farm report? Yeah. I got that farm report. Somewhere. <laughs> Well, folks, it's going to be an incomplete farm report because not everything's in just yet, but I got beef up, pork down, chickens, vaseline. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know that much about South Bellies, but what I do know is that it's time for a word from our sponsor, D.D. D. Snavely of D.D.'s D. Used Weapons. Here's D.D. D. now to tell us all about D.D. <laughs> Does the high cost of security have you blue? If so, come by the store and browse through our complete selection of used guns and knives. <laughs> or find what you need in our mace and tear gas department. <laughs> now, we understand that many people are hesitant to buy used weapons, but all of these weapons are absolutely 
guaranteed to kill. <laughs> now, if you find a weapon here that won't kill, you bring it back. <laughs> we'll get you something that will. <laughs> it's on our guarantee. If DDs can't kill it, it's immortal. <laughs> And now for that weather report, we're going to go out there to the field with Harold Dean Ladder. Harold Dean, what's it going to be? Well, it's going to be a little bit of everything. Uh, we're expecting a whole lot of rain from the east and the west and the north, and uh, it'll be from the south. But by mid-morning, it should have cleared off, and by noon, it should be unbearably hot and humid. But we're expecting temperatures around but that afternoon we got these possible dust storms hanging our way from out west Texas. They could be severe. While they say the sky could go completely black by around four o'clock in the afternoon. Now, we also got this swarm of locusts heading our way from out Louisiana, but we figured the dust will kill off a lot of them and the rest will probably drown or get blown away in this tropical storm that's heading our way from the coast. And that will be tropical storm Luther. And that storm is gonna hit here around ten o'clock. <laughs> bring a whole lot of rain with it. It's gonna be wet, cloudy, and miserable. And it's gonna rain <laughs> for several days. So get out those raincoats. <laughs> Back to you, Thurston. <laughs> well, you heard it, folks. Rain. You know, Harold Dean has to get up every morning about 4.30 to give these weather reports. Sometimes we'll be driving to the studio and we'll see old Harold Dean standing out there in the field and God only knows what kind of weather. Hell, I've seen him up to his neck in snow before. You remember that time he spotted that water spout over a few miller pond, picked him <laughs> up and dropped him in Dewey County. And he still got that weather report in on time. He did. 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 He a UFO, that is an unidentified flying object, has been spotted by R.R. Snavely over Lake Mobiti. R.R. says it looks like a gigantic hovering chalupa without the guacamole. <laughs> well, that's what it says. It does. It does. It does. And from our world news desk, Peace talks fail. Attack is imminent. Ah, uh, well, that's all the news we got for you. <laughs> stay tuned, stay tuned, cause we got Leonard on the line. Tell me to thank you, Ronnie. Got a note here. You forgot to throw the power switch. You're not on the air. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Tuna. This is Thurston Wheelie. And this is Arliss Struby. And this is the Wheelie Struby. <laughs> this is Elmo Watkins, radio station OKKK, for Clan 249. I just want to remind everybody to show up tonight for the meet down at the meet house. We're going to talk about them share properties down by Hog Shooter Creek. They've been taking up more than their fair share of the land down there. Ain't believing nothing for the wild game to live in. Come next fall, there ain't going to be nothing to kill. <laughs> that sport's going to be gone. So we want to remind everybody to show up tonight so we can plan out what we're going to say to them. 
and I think they are going to listen. <laughs> they'll know what plan two, four, nine. <laughs> <laughs> This is Pete Fisk speaking to you for the Greater Tuna Humane Society. And I would like to ask for each of you to take a minute to think about ducks. <laughs> it's tough being a duck. The cartoons portray ducks as genetic mutants with speech impediments. <laughs> the very word duck when used as a verb means to rapidly lower body position to avoid injury. So when you say duck to somebody, well, they don't know if you're talking about a bird or accident. <laughs> and the Chinese eat their feet. <laughs> now, <laughs> but we've got a duck crisis situation right here in Tuna. Oh, ever since the government flooded Buckner Basin, the wild ducks have got no nesting grounds left. Oh, we're up to our necks in homeless ducks. <laughs> to remedy this situation, Humane Society has published a pamphlet, Duck Trapping Without Trauma. And we're sending copies to every home in the Greater Tuna area. Now, you bring your trapped ducks to me, Petey Fisk, and I will personally relocate them in unflooded areas. This is Petey Fisk for the Greater Tuna Humane Society. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. 
understand me. She'll hear you. Yeah, Mama, I know she's up there because I heard her going to the bathroom and turn on the water. And every time she turns on the water, I know she's up there trying to squeeze into another pair of my blue jeans. <laughs> well, Stanley, you may be big yourself someday. If I am, shoot me. Stanley! <laughs> Miss Gimel, I'm in a bit of a hurry. 
Can we get right to the interview? Well, certainly. Uh, have a seat. <laughs> <laughs> now then, Miss Dumela, you are chairing the censorship of textbooks committee. Am I correct? Oh, no, 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 no. That's the Reverend Spikes who has that committee. Although I am a member, we're having a meeting this afternoon, by the way. Uh, but please don't come. The Reverend Spikes, he just hates the press. I think it's because of all them old folks' homes he owns and them terrible things they said about him in the newspapers. I, oh, well, I better shut up. <laughs> anyway, I had the subcommittee that wants to snatch the books off the shelves of the local high school library. Some of those books are absolutely disgusting. And our children have no business reading them, and somebody has got to protect the minds of children. Well, before we get to the books, Miss Dumela, could you tell me what in your background do you feel qualifies you to censor library books? <laughs> <laughs> I could briefly list some of my activities, if you like. Oh, please. Well, I'm currently president of the Ladies for a Better Tuna. Mother of Den 225. I'm the only high C soprano in the First Baptist Choir. <laughs> and I'm currently the recorder of the Havelina Club. Uh, that's a women's auxiliary of the Wild Hogs. <laughs> it's a kind of break off from the Lions Club. We just thought the Lions were too little. I'm the former head of the local BBB. That's the Better Baptist Bureau. <laughs> and I'm a member of our shut-in visiting squad, the Tuna Helpers. <laughs> and I am currently president and co-founder of Citizens for Fewer Blacks in Literature. <laughs> Uh, I think I get the idea. Well, all right. Now then, tell me, what are the books you feel should be removed from the show? Well, now, there's four of them that we want to try and have removed nationwide. They were going on from there. What are the four books? <laughs> Roots. <laughs> now, we don't deny that Roots has been a very popular TV series, but we feel it only shows one side of the slavery issue. Go on. <laughs> Bury my heart and wounded knee. Wait, it's just the most disgusting title to begin with. It just makes me want to hurt. <laughs> it vilifies a great America, general custom. And it leads the reader to believe that the United States government cannot be trusted in making any treaties. What's next? Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. Did he write that? Oh, no. Now, this book shows a free teenage boy avoiding his chores, running away from home, cohorting with the Negro convict, and putting on women's clothes. <laughs> Romeo and Juliet. What, pray tell, is wrong with Romeo and Juliet? Well, it just shows sex among teenagers, that's all. We're certainly not for that. We're certainly not going to encourage it anyway. Besides that, it shows a rampant disrespect for parental authority. You are aware that William Shakespeare wrote that play? Oh, yes, we are. And we're looking into the rest of his stuff, too. <laughs> You know, barefoot in the park, dear. Quite often these days, people claim to talk to God. Do you talk to God? Well, I, I pray. I didn't ask you that, Miss Buman. I pray that you talk to God directly. Well, no, I don't. But he leaves those messages for me with the Reverend Spice. <laughs> Second-hand messages from the Lord is good enough for me. Thank you, Mr. Mueller. I think we've got one hell of a story here. Well, now, don't you rush off. I've got other interesting things to tell you about Tuna. Well, I'm sure they just 
Bottle of mine must be in my lap. <laughs> I really must run. Now, wait a minute. What was the name of your magazine? Fantaline. I don't believe we have that here in town. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see that you get a copy. Goodbye, Mr. Miller. Well, bye. <laughs> well, I think reporters just ask the silliest questions. <laughs> yes, I'm lucky he didn't ask more than he did. Thank God he didn't ask me about my family. <laughs> Poor Charlene. That girl is just going crazy over not getting to be cheerleading. I said, Charlene, honey, settle down. It will be fine. <laughs> you can be cheerleader next year. <laughs> she just looks at me with tears streaming down her cheeks and says, Boo, I'm a senior. <laughs> I don't know how to tell my own adult she'll never get to be cheerleading. <laughs> just don't know how to do it. And Stanley, I swear, I don't know what I'm going to do with that boy, dating that Mexican girl. He never has been, right? <laughs> Jody, Jody will be okay, except he's got eight to ten dogs around him all the time. He'll grow out of that. I know he will. I hope. <laughs> well, at least I didn't have to lie about Hank. I swear, I have cooked and cleaned for that sorry son of a bitch for 27 years. <laughs> he won't even take me to the drive-in movies. Of course, I pretend not to notice on Sunday morning as we go to church after Saturday night, after I smell the perfume, seen the lipstick smear. I swear, sometimes I just wish that man would have a stroke I can't. I don't mean that. <laughs> God, forgive me. I don't mean that. I'm just so glad that reporter didn't last. <laughs> This is Horace Struve with the news update concerning the recently deceased Judge Roscoe Buckner, who died yesterday. Now, the body was found by Nikki Mayberry, who come over to collect for the newspaper. Nikki wishes to quell all rumors that the judge was found dead in a woman's bikini swimsuit. <laughs> he says there's no truth to that rumor whatsoever. It's not, it's not, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It was a 80 Fisk speaking to you for the Greater Tuna Humane Society. And I'm here to introduce this week's Pet of the Week. His name is Yippie Ya Ya Ya. But we just call him Yippie. That's why. This is Yippie's fifth appearance as Pet of the Week. And his charming little partner, a rat terrier, part chihuahua, will make a lovely pet for someone. We're sure. Now, his only real drawback as a pet is a tendency to hyperactive behavior. <laughs> now, as you know, we here at the Humane Society quite often have trouble giving away small, shrill animals. <laughs> we still have hope for Yippie. We know there must be some deaf person out there who <laughs> and who make the perfect owner for Yippie. So if there's any deaf person out there listening who wants to please call me, Petey Fisk, at 477-7777. Call any time, day or night. If you're out of town, call collect. Please call like I did in the dog. This is Petey Fisk for the Greater Town Humane Society. Thank you.
says, be sure to bring all your rock and roll. And this time, be sure to bring all your Chuck Berry, your Brenda Lee, and your Little Richard. He says, leave that Buddy Holly and Elvis at home. They're good old Southern boys, and they'll be forgiven. <laughs> anyway, that's this coming Sunday night at 8 o'clock down at the Coweta Baptist Church. <laughs> so bring your rock and roll, come on out, and burn it. <laughs> Let's see what else we have here. Now, Ida Tompkins is sponsoring another trip up to the Eureka Springs Passion play over in Arkansas. Ida says if you signed up, they'll be leaving this Saturday morning, about 7.45 a.m., from the First Methodist parking lot. And Ida says if you're not there by 7.45, she's going to leave you. All right, folks, it's time for our first call. <laughs> Hello, you're on the line with Leonard. Linda. Leonard, Dee Dee's name, Leonard. Dee Dee, turn that radio down. Folks, you got to remember when you call in to turn your radio stands. It blows the hell out of my ears. <laughs> What's up, Dee Leonard, can't something be done about them Halloween pranksters? Kind of early for Halloween, ain't it? Oh, Leonard, you wouldn't feel that way if you knew what I'd been through. Now, Leonard, soaping windows and letting the air out of tires is one thing, but I draw the line at extreme mental anguish. Do you hear me, Leonard? I hear you, Dee. Oh, Leonard, last year them kids come over in the middle of the night and poured sore gum syrup all over my front porch. Well, that's real mean. Oh, I'm just getting started, Leonard. Now, my mama comes over every morning about 5.30 after she's had her prunes. And when old mama hits that thick syrup, it stops her date and her trying. Oh, baby, that's real me. <laughs> it's not funny, Leonard. She was out there for two and a half hours. She watched the sun come up. Now, who could think of anything that mean? Well, I'm sure that Virgil Carp was in on it. Well, that I don't can't think prove that Virgil would do. Yes, well, if I catch that boy near my house, he better have a high threshold to paint. Now, did we all know you wouldn't do anything to hurt that boy? Hide and watch, Leonard. Hide and watch. <laughs> I tell you, son, if you're listening, that woman means business. But Leonard, the damage is already done. Oh, I can't even pour syrup over my pancakes without, without thinking of that poor little old lady trying to reach that doorbell. Now, now, please, sit back. Ain't no use getting all upset. Uh, take one of your nerve pills. I believe I will. Thank you, Dee Dee. <laughs> Folks, it's getting so the kids can't have any fun anymore. <laughs> you know, Dee Dee has a rough life down there running that store. She's got a lot to let out. Let's see who our next caller will be. Hello? You're on the line with Leonard. Let it out. <laughs> Hello? You're on the line. Am I on? Turn it out! I forgot. Go! Um, this is Finest Line. What's up, Finest? I'm calling to announce that I will be a candidate for Tuna City Council in next year's election. Now, fine. You've been running for city council for as long as I can remember. Well, why don't you just give up? Well, you know, it, it's kind of funny. <laughs> as you know, in past elections, my opponents have used personality as a major issue. Now, let's face it, in a personality contest, I'm always going to lose. After all, I'm short, and I was born in Indiana. And a lot of people just naturally seem to hate me. 
<laughs> You're right there, Farnus. But this year I'm injecting new and vital issues that cannot be ignored by the voters. Did you know, for example, that there are thousands of citizens in this country who pay no taxes whatsoever? Like who, Farnus? Like prisoners and welfare mothers. <laughs> they don't pay any. No. I, it would be easy to tax the prisoners because everybody knows where they are. <laughs> well, you've got a point there, Farnus. We wish you the very best of luck this time around. Well, you only have to win once. Thank you, Father. <laughs> I tell you, he's a man ahead of his time. Remember, folks, you heard it here first. You know, Father's <coughs> fly has been running for city council now for here on to 14 years, and he's never even made it to first base. Hang in there, Father. All right, let's see who our next caller is going to be. Hello, you're on the line with Leonard. Let it out. Ah, uh, yeah, this is uh, Stanley Dumella. Now, what do you want, Stanley? <laughs> Keep it clean. Yeah, well, I was just listening to your last phone call, and it seems to me if the government is looking to tax something, why don't they put a tax on stupidity? <laughs> now, Stanley, this is a serious program. Get to it. I am serious. I guarantee you one thing. If this country had a stupid tax, Finus Fly would be in the top bracket. <laughs> Stanley, Finus Fly is a model citizen, unlike some people I know. He's a pinhead idiot. Stanley, we don't have time to get into any of this name call. He's an ignorant little idiot. Stanley, ain't none of why don't you tell Finus Fly to keep my rough arena? <laughs> Stanley, you can't say that on the radio. <laughs> folks, folks, I hate to say anything bad about Hank and Bertha Bumiller's boy. We all thought that year in reform school would do that for us <laughs> He came out meaner than Mussolini. <laughs> I just can't help some folks I read. All right, we have time now for one more call. Hello, you're on the line with Leonard. Do it that. Leonard, Dee Dee Snavely again. What is it this time, Dee Dee? Leonard, can't something be done about them hobos under the interstate bridge? <laughs> Out there under that underpass. Oh. Well, it's gotten so crowded, you can't even dump your garbage there anymore. And Steve, you can smell them in Coweta County. Now, Leonard, there is enough soap in the world to keep everybody clean. Am I wrong? I believe you're right, Dee. And instead of minding the store, my husband R.R. R. goes down there and drinks with them. Now, Dee, isn't that where old R.R. R. spotted that flying Mexican food? <laughs> no, it isn't. And it's real white of you to bring it up. What? No! What? Miss Pearl Burris, 
general delivery to the Texas. Dear Ms. Burns, after a recent unsavory <laughs> phone call from your niece, Bertha Miller, I feel compelled to write to you. As you know, relations have never been strong between the Humane Society and those who raise chickens. We do understand that this is your livelihood, disgusting as it may be, to those of us here at the Humane Society. Here, chick, 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 chick. Come and get it, baby. Here, baby, baby, baby. We do feel, however, that you are posing a danger to the children of your neighborhood, as well as their pets. Now, we're sure you love the kids of your neighborhood as much as we do. <laughs> Get out of those tomatoes! <laughs> Get out of them! I'm gonna call Sheriff Gibbons! <laughs> Let me at them. <laughs> Bruce, we have traced over 70 dog poisonings to your doorstep. <laughs> now, don't you think this is taking eccentricity a bit too far? Oh? They've left that poodle in my yard. I'll bet it's an egg sucker. I'll kill it. <laughs> that you have been somewhat overzealous on the protection of your chickens. Where is my straight line? <laughs> Mr. Coward, don't tell me I'm out. In fact, Miss Burris, there are those of us here at the Humane Society who believe you actually enjoy poisoning dogs. <laughs> We are well aware of your pills. Those strict nine lace biscuits rolled into enticing little dough balls. <laughs> oh, I found it. <laughs> Henry thought it'd be smart and kind, but I found it. I'm going to kill me a poodle. <laughs> There's my biscuits. I'm going to make you a better pig. We are also aware that your husband, Henry, is the owner of Rick, the finest bird dog in Dewey County. How could anyone who lives around a $2,000 dog like Ripper poison people's puppies so heartlessly? Here, puppy, puppy, puppy! <laughs> Come here, it's just a better pill. <laughs> Come here, egg lips. <laughs> Come on, get it. Oh, get back, Ripper. It's not for you. Now stay back. Now come on, get get back. It is not for you, Ripper. Now stay over there. Oh, I didn't mean to scare you. Now, come on over here. Get this. I'll set it down right there. Now, oh, get back, Ripper. Ripper, don't eat that. Oh, my God. Ripper has eaten the bitter pen. <laughs> You have classic symptoms of canicidal thumbitis, <laughs> a psychological disorder that causes you to want to kill other people's dogs for real or imagined reasons. Oh, my God. I poisoned Henry's bird dog. Look at him shake. <laughs> the only known cure for canicidal thumbitis is to surround the patient with lots and lots of dogs until the urge to kill passes. What am I going to do? Think, her, think, think. I know what I'll do. I'll call Stanley. I'll have him come over here and drag that dog out in the road. We'll run over it with the pony axe. Hell, Henry, I'll get my car. And you are in luck, Miss Burke. The Humane Society has a one-way bus ticket for you to Dallas to the Texas State Dog Fair, where you can be surrounded by over 4,000.
thousand dollars. That's what I'll do. I'll call Stanley. I can tell on Stanley. Miss Burst, if you can make it through the entire show without poisoning a single animal, the Humane Society will pay your bus fire home. <laughs> Think. You can find peace of mind, and the dogs of your neighborhood can have a respite from the death and carnage to which they have been subjected. <laughs> Sincerely, Petey Fisk, Greater Tuna Humane Society. Hello, Stanley. This is Pearl. Get over here quick. I need you. I want you to run over Henry's bird dog. <laughs> Ripper? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, he's already dead. <laughs> I killed him. <laughs> oh, Stanley, I know it's not as much fun running over a dead dog. Is that you? <laughs> what have they 
Eat Andy! <laughs> Mark, good? You look so waxy. <laughs> they waxed you down, Joe. <laughs> you old son of a bitch. <laughs> Yeah. Don't you look just like yourself? 
Don't you know your honor? Dave. <laughs> you can't imagine how safe I feel. Because I had me a lot of time to think about it while I was in reform school. In fact, that's about all I can say for Gatesville. Plenty of time to think. <laughs> yeah, Jake. I had to nuzzle up to that homely housekeeper of yours, Yolanda. She thought I was in love. Yeah, I kept it up. I kept it up till I got me a copy of all her keys. I got all my information. Bobby. You know, like her schedule and your schedule. And that one hour. That one hour on Wednesday morning when you was all alone. When Yolanda went out to buy the groceries, yeah, I found out about that, and I set you up. I just parked out across from the Piggly Wiggly and waited. <laughs> when I seen Yolanda going to that store, I done me a beeline straight to your house. I drove right up your curving driveway, walked right through your damn front door, up the stairs to your bedroom. And all you could do was Lay there on your half paralyzed ass and stare. <laughs> but you knew what I was there for, didn't you? You knew. Man, it was hell getting you into that swimsuit. <laughs> <laughs> but it was worth it. <laughs> you want to know what my favorite part was? Huh? <laughs> you want to know what my favorite part was, your honor? It was when I pulled out that syringe and you started pleading with me. You, pleading with me. And all it took to finish you off was a few little air bubbles right in the old vein. Just a few little air bubbles, stroke. Yeah, I guess way even. Why don't I feel like <coughs> You know, maybe someday after my mama's dead, I just might turn myself in. Won't everybody be surprised? <laughs> I can hear him now. Who'd ever thought Stanley Bumiller would have had the brain to pull that off? Where I'd gone. Our parents had no 
a barbecue and run the can compare to a lovely Texas sunset when the dust is in the air. <laughs> and Tina and my team in that street on Friday night when the Jaguars lose another game and everybody's back. And I love you when you cross and I love you when you drop. And in April when the pollen is so thick it makes you cry. But Tina and my team appreciate just the way you are. I just think the world at that of Tina is bizarre. Doesn't that just warm the cockles of your heart? Thank you, Charlene. Got a call today from Nadine Wooten's mother, Norma. She says Nadine is standing out along the highway again with her suitcase. <laughs> now, as most of you folks know, every year about this time, poor Nadine stands out along Route 4 with her suitcase. Now, don't try to pick her up. She'll only tell you she's waiting on her fiancé, Mr. Montague. We thought we'd remind you to look out for her. Don't run her over, and don't try to pick her up. <laughs> well, Arliss, it looks like it's that time of year. It is. 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 And now, folks, next up in the news, one owl rainy is not dead. No, she's not. She's not. She's not. Now, as you all know, one owl's been in the hospital now for about eight months with a combination of fatal diseases. I don't know how many did she have. Well, I don't remember, Arliss, but it was awful. Oh, it was awful. I thought she was going to die. Well, she thought she... How we all thought she was going to die. We did. We did. We did. We did. <laughs> but she didn't. No, she didn't. She didn't. And she's home and she says everybody drop by and see her, give her a ring. She's not dead. <laughs> she's okay. She is. She is. She is. And now, folks, it's time for a little culture. In keeping with the government's new policy of allowing private enterprise to contribute to America's artistic needs, Radio station O K K K is proud to present the Weekly Art Minute. <laughs> and this week's guest is none other than Tuna's own R. R. Snavely. <laughs> what do you got for us today, R. R.? Honky Tonk, hey, you honky. They just take it away, R. R. Well, I gotta warm up first, Arliss. Now hurry up there, R.R., you only got 40 seconds left. <laughs> <laughs>
This is Petey Fisk speaking to you for the Greater Tumor Humane Society. <laughs> you know, we here at the Humane Society receive a whole lot of flack saying we're insensitive to the needs of fish. Well, now, this is not true at all. Well, we care a great deal about fish. We understand that when you take your fish out of the water with a hook in its mouth and rip it through its jaw and take out a knife and stick it in its anal opening and cut up to its neck and scrape its inside out, that fish feels that. Fish feel pain. They're just very, very subtle about expressing it. I'm so pleased. Join the growing number of Americans who prefer their fish in rivers and streams and not on the plate with tater tots. <laughs> this is Petey Fisk for the Greater Tuna Humane Society. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> This is Elmer Watkins from Tuna Speaks. As a citizen of Tuna, I feel it's my obligation to speak up about this Agent Orange stuff and its effects on servicemen. I just want to say that in the last year, I hired 14 veterans, Vietnam veterans, to work for me on my road crew. And out of those 14, only four of them have died. <laughs> there wasn't a one of them turned on. <laughs> I swear to God, not one of them turned any ways near on. <laughs> I think it's just more of this propaganda by this liberal press, these hippie-oriented groups. <laughs> I think it's time somebody spoke up about this Agent Orange stuff. <laughs> Obligated to learn. <laughs> Let's just see 
even newspapers make fun of that. <laughs> He's still not here, so I'm going to forge ahead. We need to send out a snatch squad. <laughs> Snatching squad to that Tuna High School Library to check those dictionaries. Now, we have come up with a new list of words that have been declared possibly offensive or misunderstandable to pre college students. And the words are hot, hooker, coke, clap, D flower. <laughs> Ball, knocker, and nuts. <laughs> After much prayer and soul searching with the Lord, we have decided not to include the word snatch on this year's list. Now well, we know many of you have very strong feelings about snatch. <laughs> our letterhead at this time. <laughs> Here he is. So I will officially turn the meeting over to our honorable president, the Reverend Spikes. Thank you, Vera. <coughs> Folks, I'm so sorry I'm so late, but let's get down to business. Now we're going to send out a book snatching squad to the Tuna High School Library. I always tell them that. Well, Vera, that's that the fun of being president, sending out the snatch artist. I'm sorry, I, I won't do it again. Please don't. <laughs> All right, folks, we got a new communique on our bilingual program over at the oh, Tuna High School. Oh, I told that and already, I, too. Well, you just told them everything, didn't you, Bill? Well, what did you expect me to do for 15 minutes while you weren't here? Sing shame tunes. <laughs> Here, I'd like to get into this power struggle thing in front of all these people. Hush, hush. The radio people are here. Well, so they are. Yeah. Hello, Arliss. How are you? Mine, mine. Uh, what's that? Are we ready with the Buckner eulogy? Of course. Yes, yes, we're ready with the Buckner eulogy. I tell you what, Arliss, you just set her up back there in the back, and when you're ready, just kind of wave your hand. What's that? Oh, you are ready? No, no, I'm ready. Is this live? This is the Reverend Spikes. I just want to say, I just want to say a few words about a friend of mine and a friend of two. Judge Roscoe Buckner spent his whole life in service to his community, his country, and his Lord. And we are sure that when that roll is called up yonder, he'll be there. <laughs> he was a judge who made hay while the sun shines. But always, I say always, let a smile be his umbrella. He always kept his sunny side up and saw the silver lining behind every cloud. A judge who took no wooden nickel, <laughs> nor threw caution to the wind, but looked before he left and never got in over his head. <laughs> no, he kept his head. We're all about him. We're losing theirs and blame it on him. He kept a stiff upper lip, his nose to the wind. About this man, we can truly say he was one of a kind. A jolly good fellow which nobody can deny. He was one for all and all for one, and to his own self truth. But I can tell you this, he did it his way. He was a serious-minded judge who let bygones be bygones. But remember the Alamo! About this man we can truly say. He was the cream in Tudor Coffee. He fought fire with fire. And he kept those home fires burning. And when he couldn't stand the heat, he got out of the kitchen. He would walk that extra much. He would walk his soft web. And he'd carry a big stick. He was a pepper. A man. He laid his cards on the table. 
He was a judge who wouldn't fire until he saw the whites of their eyes, but whistled a happy little tune, praise God and pass that ammunition, for he had not yet begun to fight, for never, ever did I hear the man say die. He just did. <laughs> he was a fine, upstanding civil servant who practiced what he preached, put his best foot forward and his money where his mouth was. <laughs> and when the going got tough, he was gone. <laughs> it's not easy to find words to describe such a man, but I've done my best. We commend to you, Lord, his soul. I, the Reverend Spites, recommend. Amen, Lord. Amen.
appropriations of 1814, you need to know that Thursday is your last day to rest your kids from the Strayberry's Heritage Act and Survival Institute. Now this year, they're offering taxes in Old Testament of Segregation in the scripture.
And of course there's root and ducks and yippee. <coughs> and another thing is, well hunting season's just around the corner and that means nightmares are going to start again. Well that's why I hear that first shot of nightmares starting. It don't stop till November. <laughs> now I hate to bother you with all this, I really do. And if you are up there, and if you did create all this, well, we sure could use some help taking care of it. Thank you. Amen. Like better than tuna. Move! <laughs> 